Hey you, today we're going to be talking about sinking funds. I'm going to tell you exactly what they are and how you can use them to take budgeting and managing your money to the next level. If you are ready to take complete charge of your finances, then you don't want to miss this. Stay tuned. <laughs> Healthy, Wealthy, Skinny, where we focus on the steps to help you live a healthy, wealthy, and skinny life. I'm Sean, and if you are ready to start thriving and not just surviving, go ahead and hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and hit the bell icon so you get a notification every week when I drop a new video. And be sure to stay until the very end because as always, I've got something special for you. Let's jump right into the content. What are sinking funds? Sinking funds are money that you save to meet a specific savings goal. For example, if you were saving money each month to buy a car, then this would be an example of a sinking fund. So now you might be asking, why do you need a sinking fund? Having a sinking fund ultimately makes your budget stronger and they can give you peace of mind when it comes to making large purchases. Chances are sometimes this year you will have to purchase gifts, replace something that regularly wears out, or renew an annual or quarterly subscription. If you are not actively planning on how you're going to pay for these expenses, they're going to have to come out of some category of your budget. And this might be out of your emergency fund, out of your regular savings, or even you might have to put them on your credit cards. Sinking funds allow for you to strategically plan for these expenses so you don't have to pull money out of these other areas. Having sinking funds will get you away from feeling like something always happens to mess up your budget. So now you might be wondering, what's the difference between sinking funds and my regular savings? With sinking funds, you are planning for a specific goal. The purpose of that money is to be spent. With general savings, you are saving money to build wealth. Your goal is to accumulate more money, not necessarily to spend that money. Sinking funds are targeted. You know exactly what you're saving for, and in most cases, you know exactly how much money you need to save to meet your goal. Okay, so now you might be thinking, Sean, what's the difference between a sinking fund and an emergency fund? And the difference is simply with the intention of the money. Your emergency fund is for unplanned emergencies, things that might happen that you couldn't possibly plan for. You're going to start with $1,000 to build up an initial emergency fund, and then you're going to expand that to three to six months of your regular living expenses. This money is designed to help you out when any type of unplanned emergency happens. And this could be a home repair, a medical emergency, or even you losing your job. You have no idea when and if any of these type of emergencies are going to happen, but your emergency fund is there to protect you just in case it does. Sinking funds are different. You know exactly what you're saving for. You are in essence planning in advance. If I continue with my car buying example, you know that you want to buy a car and purchasing that car is your savings goal and you probably have a good idea how much money you're going to need for the down payment on that car or to pay for the car in full. Another example could be purchasing Christmas gifts. You know Christmas is going to come around every year. You might have a good idea of the people that you want to buy gifts for and you can plan in advance how much money you want to spend on Christmas gifts at the end of the year. If you were to save money each month towards your Christmas gifts, this would be considered your Christmas sinking fund. Let's talk about the types of sinking funds. And here I'm going to go back to what I always tell you. Personal finance is personal. Your sinking funds will be unique to you. They need to fit your specific financial needs. With that being said, there are some pretty common sinking fund categories. If you are a homeowner, then you know the maintenance and upkeep of a house is a monster. There are some repairs in your home that are covered by your insurance, but there are many things that are not. So having a house sinking fund will help you with home maintenance and upkeep. 
It might be hard to guess what repairs might be needed on items in your homes, but in some cases you know when things are reaching end of their life. You might have to do things like get a new roof or replace a furnace, or there are any number of appliances in your home that might need repairs. If you don't currently own a home, but you are planning to buy one, you might use a house sinking fund to save for your down payment. Another common sinking fund is a car sinking fund. And this one can be looked at two ways as well. If you don't own a car, you can save money to put a down payment on the car or pay for a used car outright. If you do own a car, then a car comes with a lot of maintenance. You have to purchase new tires, you have to get oil changes, or any number of repairs that your car might need. Your car sinking fund can be a great way for you to plan for these expenses ahead of time. Like I mentioned earlier, another common sinking fund is a Christmas fund. You might use this to travel for Christmas or buy Christmas gifts or host a family coming to your house for Christmas. Next, we have yearly subscriptions. You know that $99 or whatever your Amazon annual subscription is, you can save for that throughout the year in a yearly subscription sinking fund. Another one is your car insurance. You save a little money if you pay for your car insurance for the entire year or every six months, rather than paying it monthly. So if you set up a sinking fund where you can save up six months worth of your car insurance or even a whole year worth of your car insurance, you'll be saving money. So this is another good use of a sinking fund. Another good sinking fund example is for travel or family vacations. You know that you and your family would like to travel every year, so why not save money in advance in a sinking fund for your yearly vacations? Now here are a few good ones if you have kids. Back to school is definitely a good reason to have a sinking fund. You've got clothes, shoes, and school supplies. And if you have multiple kids, then these expenses can really add up. So back to school is a great sinking fund category. And another one in this line of thinking is for sports. If you have kids that are in sports and if you have multiple kids that are in sports, this could be very expensive. So a sinking fund for your kids sporting activities is another great idea. And then finally, I have a sinking fund for medical expenses. Whether you have insurance or not, this is a great category. You can use this for your co-pays, your prescriptions, eyeglasses, or even dental visits. Having a medical sinking fund is another really common sinking fund category. I hope that gives you some ideas of sinking fund categories that you might use. Again, make them personal to you. All of the examples that I've given you may not apply to your lifestyle, so they won't be needed. And you might be able to think of some that I haven't covered. So now let's talk about how much money should be in your sinking funds. The beauty of sinking funds is that you do have some information to help you determine how much money you need in each of your sinking fund categories. Let's move on with my purchasing a car example. You know exactly how much money you're going to need to purchase your car. You can give yourself a set amount of time to purchase your car, or because you have a budget and you know exactly how much money you have available to save each month, you can let that determine how much time it's going to take you to purchase your car. In general, when creating each one of your sinking funds, you'll need to do the following. Determine the amount of money that you want to save for each sinking fund. Determine the time period that you're going to be saving. So how many months are you going to give yourself to reach that savings goal? The next thing you're going to do is divide the amount that you need by the number of months that you've given yourself to reach your goal. And then finally, you're going to take that amount and that is what you're going to contribute to your sinking fund each month. And you'll need to do these steps for each one of your sinking fund categories. Now that we have a clear view of what sinking funds are and how you can use them, let's talk about the different places where you can keep your sinking funds. The first method is sinking fund cash envelopes. If by chance you use the cash envelope method of budgeting, then this one is going to be right up your alley. In this method, you would create separate envelopes for each one of your sinking funds. You will then add the specified amount to each envelope each pay period until you reach your savings goal. To keep up with your progress, you could use really cute printables that you can either keep inside of your cash envelopes or inside of a planner or a finance binder. 
you can find Seeking Fun envelopes and labels in the HWS shop. And we try to add new designs often to keep them fresh and just give you a fun way to keep track of your money. I'll leave a link to the HWS shop in the description and I'll also leave a link to some free tracking printables that you can use. Another method you can use to keep track of your sinking funds is savings accounts. With this method, you would use a separate savings account for each one of your sinking funds. The goal here is to keep your money for each sinking fund separate. When using this method, you want to be sure that you're not accumulating unnecessary bank fees. If your bank is charging you maintenance fees per savings account, then you may not want to open multiple savings accounts with that bank. I would recommend that you watch my video on high yield savings accounts and the best bank accounts so you can pick a savings account that is going to be free with no maintenance fees and give you a good interest rate. These are very good options for your sinking funds. I personally have a savings account with Ally Bank. It is a high yield savings account so I do earn interest and they have an awesome feature that allows me to track my sinking funds with one savings account so I don't have to have multiple accounts. With this one account, I can separate my savings into different categories or sinking funds and keep track of them separately. You should now have a clear idea of what sinking funds are and how they can help you take your budget to the next level. In my next video, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper and tell you how you can add sinking funds to your budget. But right now, it is bonus time. You have made it to the end of this video, and as promised, I've got something special for you. Look down in the description, click on the link, give me your email address, and I'll send it your way. But before you do that, I've got another video I'd like for you to watch. I'd like for you to watch this video right here because I chose it especially for you and I'm going to meet you over there. Bye!